Unconformities are when you have missing layers of the geologic record. They represent times of either erosion or non-deposition. There are three main types of unconformities. Our three main types are angular unconformity, disconformity, or nonconformity. Angular is going to be the easiest to spot. An angular is just going to be at an, angle, at an angle relative to the surface. So we see those surficial layers are still horizontal, whilst the layers below them are at an angle. What would have happened in this region is uplift causing tilting and subsequent erosion of the bottommost layers, and then later you have deposition atop those. The boundary between the angled layers and the horizontal layers represents the unconformity itself. So this line you see here, the bolded squiggly line, is the angular unconformity. The boundary itself is the unconformity. Our second one is a disconformity. A disconformity results from erosion across the surface, where you have a body of water, here it would be a river, winding its way across the surface, eroding in one spot where the other materials that are exposed at the surface to wind and water are further eroded, thereby leaving a layer that has dips in it. That brings me to the reminder that we have for dips to help you remember it. So disconformity, you're going to find dips in the boundary. Those dips, the lowest points of the dips, would then represent the channel that the creek or the river was running through. Disconformities tend to be between layers of sedimentary rocks. So you can have a shale or limestone on the bottom half of the layer while you have a sandstone or another shale or limestone or what have you on the upper layer. So in disconformity, you're going to have dips between layers of sedimentary rock. Refer to the video on lithologic keys or lithologic patterns if you're not sure what type of rock you're looking at. The last kind we have is called a nonconformity. Nonconformities, the way I would remember it, is that they are not the same type of rock. A nonconformity happens between igneous material and sedimentary material. So this can look like a horizontal continuous layer, as you will see here. So you know from our lithologic keys that those sprinkle patterns are igneous material, and then the dashed and dotted lines that would be shales and sandstones. Up above we have conglomerates. So those two upper layers, the yellow and green layers up on top, are sedimentary, whilst the bottommost, or cream-colored layer, is igneous. What would have happened is that magmatic material, or igneous material, solidified, lithified, and on top of that layer you had perhaps downward erosion leveling out the surface when the entire surface would have been basalt. Think of the uh, areas surrounding volcanoes in Hawaii where you have all that igneous material right at the surface. And over time, that is being leveled out. It is being um, uh, smoothed by weathering materials or weathering processes. But then on top of those layers, let's say when um, those Hawaiian islands erode down such they are no longer above sea level, you will have deposition on top of those layers. And that's what would have happened here in our model. We had a layer of igneous material with sedimentary material on top of it. So you have some period of time where the igneous material was just eroding downward and you don't have any deposition during that time, thereby creating our third unconformity, being a nonconformity. So angular unconformities are at an angle, disconformities, you have dips in the boundary, whilst a nonconformity, you do not have the same type of rock. You'll have igneous and sedimentary rock in the same area. When you're doing relative dating and you're aging different layers or you're putting ages on the faults, in some cases you will also order the unconformity as a sequence of events in your relative aging list.